Now you may have seen that Adobe just launched this new artificial intelligence feature within Photoshop called Generative Fill. And I gotta tell you guys, it is insane. But as a content creator, I instantly thought, how can I use this tool to make better, more interesting thumbnails quicker and at a more professional standard? And so today we're gonna look at the practical applications of using this tool to create awesome YouTube thumbnails. So for instance, let's say we're making a Mr. Beast thumbnail where the whole premise of the video is he has to do this challenge, otherwise he's gonna go bald. Now I have this image here that's pretty high res, so I wanna use it, but obviously there's a few things wrong here. First, he has money in his ears, which I don't need. And secondly, he has hair. So I wanna see if the AI can A, get rid of that money, and B, give him a haircut. So come in here, make a selection around the money, click generative fill, generate because you just want it to take out what's there, you don't wanna give it a prompt, and let's do its magic. Can you see how perfect that is? Now that's just gotten rid of the money, put in the background like the exact same color. And the cool thing about this AI generation is it gives you three variations each time. So if I don't like these ears, maybe these ears work better. And the best thing about this is look at the lighting. It is perfect. And the skin tone is the exact same as well. So now let's see if it can make him bald. So we wanna zoom in here and select around his hair, but also we need to make sure that you give a little bit of padding around what you wanna change so the AI can actually draw from it. So for instance, I leave a bit of room around his hair so we can see what the background is. Click on generative fill and let's type in bald. That's insane. <laughs> I mean, it's a nice head shape. Huh? And what, honestly, like that's serviceable. And again, look at that lighting. It's matched the resolution quality. In fact, it's a little bit higher resolution than the original image. And you have perfect skin tones and perfect matching of the shadows and light. Considering that took me what? a minute to get rid of that money and make him bald. And that's like 100% usable for a thumbnail. Like if we come to the original image and then put these layers back on, that's really impressive. For the next example, let's do something a little bit more practical. So let's say I have this bedroom here and I really wanna use it for my thumbnail, but the image is cropped in a little bit too much on the room. I wanna use more of the room for my design. So all I need to do is make a selection of this image. And here's a quick tip with generator fill that I've seen from other people and also from what I've played with in the past is you kinda of wanna give a little bit of padding around the object that you wanna change. So you can see here that I'm also leaving about, you know, 10 pixels or so on each side of the selection. So the AI can kind of see what's in there. So I've made the selection. I just want to invert it so I'm selecting everything that I want to change. And again, just click generate a fill. I'm not going to give it a prompt here. I want to see what it can do. This one, if it works, would be absolutely incredible. Okay, let's see what the variations hold. Okay, that is much better. That's really good too, except for the floorboards here have gone a bit messed up and, and I have no idea what desk Ikea is selling these days. Let's see if liking this one, because this is kind of what I want. I want the room to be empty. So let's see if giving that a good result and then regenerating helps me get something similar to that. Okay, that one's not bad. So let's see if I can actually select this because I like the rest of the image, but this little part here just isn't doing it for me. So I've selected that and I'm just going to see if it can fill it out and make it a little bit cleaner. Yeah, that's done it. That is wicked. I mean, the carpet's a little bit messed up here, so you can see that it's not following the same sort of design pattern, but for a thumbnail image for our purposes, it's pretty insane and it's kind of matched the perspective as well. But have you ever played the game Floor is Lava? Well, let's see if the AI can play that game too. Come in to generate a fill and type in floor is lava. See if that works. Not what I intended. That's actually pretty cool. Honestly, that's really impressive. Like it's even matched the downlight reflections and the reflections from the window light. Like that one as well. But we wanted lava, hot, flowing, glowing orange lava. So let's type that in. Okay, change the base of the bed completely and it's changed the floor, but it's not bad. That's cool. Like that could really work for a thumbnail. So let's see if I can actually add a volcano in this window because that would really help sell the theme. So I think the best thing to do for these sorts of selections is you kind of want to match the shape of the end result. And hopefully that will give us a volcano that is in that pointy iconic shape. Okay, it's pretty realistic. So is that. 
Okay, I like that. So we come out there, we've just added in a mountain. Let's add in plume of smoke. One or more of the words in your prompt violate user guidelines. Okay, let's get creative here. Make a new selection that kind of looks like an hourglass and let's go volcano erupting because it should be able to see images online of volcanoes erupting and give me exactly what I need here. I mean, kind of. <laughs> it's getting the eruption, but what is that? It's like one of those uh, golf tees coming out of the volcano. But again, what's really impressive is it's matching the lighting of the overall scene. That yeah, it's getting closer, but not quite there yet. So let's try again. Volcano erupting? I'm not sure it's understanding what a volcano erupting looks like yet. Volcano eruption, maybe. Okay, that's actually not too bad. It's a little bit intense with that smoke. I probably would want to swap the sky out and everything, but at this point, it probably would have been quicker to actually go in and manually put in a volcano with the smoke myself. So if you've seen Ryan Trahan's Penny series on YouTube, you notice that a lot of his backgrounds on his thumbnails tend to be grass. Now, let's just say that he couldn't get the grass on one day or the grass was dead. Let's see if the AI can help us address this issue. So let's first make a selection around Ryan, again, giving a little bit of padding around him so the AI can kind of add shadows, hopefully, to him from the grass. I've got my selection, got grass typed in. Let's see if this works. Honestly, this is kind of exciting, like going through and just seeing if it comes up with something that actually works. Ah, uh, you know what I did? I didn't invert the mask. <laughs> what is going on? I'm so sorry, Ryan. Make the selection again. Control Shift I this time. Hopefully that should work a little bit better. Not bad. If we see the original, and then we see what it came up with. That's really impressive. So now let's put all of this together and come up with a hypothetical thumbnail for my channel. So let's just say this hypothetical video is about me becoming a monk in 30 days. So the basic idea for this thumbnail is to have a simple split view screen with a before and after image. For the before side, I want it to be kind of a depressed look with a dark room, messy hair, bags underneath my eyes and dark clothes. For the after image, obviously I wanted to show me being a monk. That means a couple of things. Firstly, I need some monk robes. And secondly, I need a haircut. And then I wanna either place myself in a desert scene or a jungle temple, whichever one fits best. So I started off with trying to make my hair messy and oh boy, did the AI struggle with that. After a while, I kind of gave up on it and just decided to switch out the background with something dark and kind of destroyed. I got this result by using dark broken room as the prompt. Not too bad, but as you can see, my white shirt stands out like a T-Rex in your backyard. I don't know why I thought of that, but it did. So let's see if the AI can fix it. And actually on the first result I generated, I got pretty much exactly what I wanted. All I'll need to do later on is just adjust the brightness to make it match the scene a little bit better. But seriously, this tool is impressive. I then also added on a band-aid onto my face to really sell that emotionally damaged look. Emotional damage! And the AI ended up making it look like a piece of paper. So something else that would be quicker just going to Google to get. Next, it was time to give myself a haircut and I was really curious to see how it would handle having my head slightly tilted back whether it would get the same shape as my head, and oh boy, did it not disappoint. For some reason, it didn't understand how to make me bald and just kept giving me really, really weird haircuts and whatever the heck this is. So after going through many variations, I ended up just giving up and settling on one that gave me a convincing bald look. And I just used Liquify to make it match the shape of my head a little bit better. And it was at this point that I made the preemptive decision never to go bald. Next up, I wanted to have bare shoulders to put the robe on. So I made a selection around my shirt and put in no shirt as the prompt. Now, funnily enough, it gave me two results with a shirt and one result with a tank top. Now I wanted no top and I tried topless as the prompt and that was blocked, which is totally understandable. So I decided that I would be able to work with this tank top image. And then for some nightmare fuel that you're gonna thank me for, I tried adding sandals to my feet and making them barefoot. And whew, it was rough. So it looks like the AI has a really hard time handling anything to do with hands and feet. But let's carry on because now it's time to make me look like a monk or a genie. 
But jokes aside, I tried getting simple orange robes, which I thought would be really easy to do, but it took me a lot of variations to get anything close to what I wanted. And I never got pure orange robes, even using that in my prompt. So 42 interesting variations later, I eventually landed on this. And I like this one because the shape is really nice and I can easily color correct it later on to make it that orange color. It would be nice and save time if the AI did it for me, but unfortunately it's not there yet. Moving on, I use the AI to generate various desert landscapes to put behind me to varying results. Some looked really good and others didn't look realistic at all. So I decided that I'm gonna have to go with the jungle theme. And this was much better. However, the hands again could use some work. Plus I've also noticed a really weird thing that when you change the background of some images, it also changes your head shape and even your hair, which is really interesting. But that's an easy fix because I just went back to my original layer, brought that forward and masked out the copy of myself with real human hands and the original head that I had from the previous image. Once I did that, I regenerated the background to get rid of any of those weird artifacts. And I ended up discovering Chipmunk Girl. <sighs> Seriously, this tool can give you some weird results. To finish the overall look, I added in some candles at my feet and the AI did a really nice job with these ones. But seeing this side of the image, I now wanted to change the original side into something that's more high tech to contrast with that jungle temple vibe. And so after a few tries with the AI, I got this result, which ended up looking really cool. I just changed out the floor with a new generation and added a subtle glow behind myself to make the image of me pop out from the dark background. Then with all the building blocks in place from the AI alone, I ended up going in there and manually bringing this image to life. Through blending modes, I added color to the robes, a band-aid to my face, curves and levels adjustments, some dark bags underneath my eyes, a nice simple rim light, and also an arrow to communicate the transformation further. And then the final touches were just adjusting the crop, adding in a lens flare, and then playing around with camera raw filter until I got this result after just one and a half hours of pretty much just playing around with the AI. So are you gonna use this in your thumbnails? I'd highly recommend you give it a try. It's heaps of fun and it can honestly produce some pretty impressive results depending on what you need. Just watch out for hands and feet. Peace and remember, you're only one video away.